well, as things go, when things are going right, they're going right. So, well, all I really did here and is I just found this screwdriver and I just kind of did one of these numbers on it where I just kind of pushed that thing out and it pushed out right away. So, the beautiful thing here is that I don't see any damage. This is the timing gear, so this is where the cam lobes are. And I don't see any damage to this at all. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So a lot of this stuff's just going to get soaked in LA's totally awesome cleaner. But if you look in here, there are, well, there's a bearing here, and there's a bearing back in here. But the cam followers, or tappets, are just frozen up in this thing. So that's all that is. So I'm either going to try and drop some 3-in-1 oil in there, maybe just apply a little heat, and then just kind of tap them down and free them up, because that's all it is, is these things are just stuck. Uh, it must have been run a few times and then put away, and you know, there's really nothing wrong with this engine at all that I've seen so far. This is a, could be a quick flip, or I might keep it, I don't know, but I mean, that's really all it is. That's the only reason there was uh, no valve action at all, is that these tappets, I guess you can call them, I'm not sure what OS refers to them as. Uh, they're not moving, they're stuck, and that's all there is that's wrong with this engine. Other than that, everything looks great, and it looks like it's a low-time engine, so yippee for me. I just scored a really nice engine for a very good price. Well, as fate would have it, when you're having a good day, you're having a good day. I didn't even need to heat these things up to get these out. I just dropped a little oil in there and just kind of stuck my hex key in here and just kind of tapped on it and they fell right. I'm just going to drop these two things in my LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. Get another thing of LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner together and just start soaking parts now. And we'll take the front end off and scrub things up, oil them up, put this thing back together and probably flip it. This stuff is awesome, just as they say. Totally awesome. I usually always take all the o-rings off, but I've never seen this stuff damage an o-ring yet. <clears throat> but when you put it in here, container, if you've got some really gummed up, carboned up parts, you may have to let it sit for longer, but you'll be able to tell. You saw the color of that stuff. You'll be able to tell when it's nearly done, because if there was a lot of carbon buildup or stuff on there, this will just change colors. It will become dark brown as it eats that stuff up, and then you can just kind of brush or wipe it off. I'm just going to throw parts in here and just start soaking everything. Uh, throw that rocker cover in there too. Some of the car parts might need to go in also, this little shaft. That little shaft I'll dress up with some 1500 grit emery cloth. That's all I'm going to put in there for now, so let's move on to taking this front housing off. Um, this thing has a woodruff key and it's pretty gummed up in there so go ahead and drop a little bit of oil in there and I may actually go and heat this thing up too. It's not necessary for me to do that right now at this second because that's not stopping me from taking the front housing off. Let's just go ahead and do that. Again this is going to have a gasket. Gonna get destroyed. Now, one thing I need to mention before I go any further Inya four stroke engines are similar in construction to these, whereas they have the drivetrain and the push rods in the rear. And with an Inya front housing, it doesn't matter what orientation it goes in. Now with an OS it does. Now if you look here on this OS it's got this boss here. This is always the bottom. So yes it probably could be bolted on 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, or 180 degrees, 270 degrees out, but this really needs to be on the bottom. So uh, even though it looks like it should be symmetrical 
just need to make sure that folks following this video need to know that so that they put it back together. I'm not sure if there's, I know there's timing marks on the shaft and this woodruff keyhole aligns with top dead center. Or actually, the woodruff key is bottom dead center because there's a top, there's a indicating mark right here that indicates that that's a top dead center. So the Woodruff key is 180 degrees out from that. Now whether that has anything to do with the housing or not, I'm not sure, but we just want to make sure we get this thing put back together the right way. So that's worth mention. Again, this is probably going to be a little tight. Yep. A little tight. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to have to go out to my workmate and I'll probably chalk you know, this portion in the work made and use this large part here as my mechanical advantage to just try and break that free. Okay, two birds with one stone. Took this out there, chalked this in the wood jaws, broke this nut free, and then I put this front housing in there and just started moving it back and forth until it popped off. And there you have it. Of course, like I said, the paper gasket is toast. No big deal. No harm, no foul. This engine smells kind of strange inside. But anyway, so here, let's look at this first. Here's the front housing. The thing I like about this engine is a lot of times you buy these used engines and there's prop, there's wear, or there's marring on the thrust washer. This one doesn't have that, so this is nice and pristine. Look at this crankshaft. I mean, it doesn't look like there's hardly any rust or anything on it at all. This thing is in nice shape. So for me to actually do a pretty decent bearing clean, I could just, you know, drip some oil in there and heat this up. But I really want to take that crankshaft out. So this thing should just pull straight off. I dropped a little oil in there. I didn't use any heat yet. I might have to use a little heat because this bearing, this should just pull right off. And I can see it's wanting to start. It's just not there yet. That woodruff key, I gotta make sure I don't lose that. I'm not sure if there was a spare one in. Oop, there it is. That came off. There's my woodruff key. So there, there we go. That came off. So now we can kind of start to look at some of this other stuff. Now as far as this goes, Probably gonna drop a little oil on that. See if maybe that'll kind of start penetrating in that crankshaft area there. Do a little bit in here. Again, see if maybe it'll start penetrating. And what I want to do is I'm either gonna go and put this in the wood jaws of my workmate again and tap it, or I can see if my arbor press will allow me to get on that. Let's bring the press up here real quick. I might be able to just press that crankshaft out. Let's see if one of the openings in this arbor press will allow me to do that. Doesn't look like that one does. This Okay, that one looks like it'll give me three sides of support and it fits pretty good. So let's, yep, let's just Okay, there we go. Crankshaft out. Alright, we're good there. back on here and drop this back down on the floor. Alright. So here's our inside of our housing. Pretty nasty. Lots of stuff in there to clean up. This bearing doesn't feel too bad. This bearing is pretty grimy. But I think I can clean that up. Just debating on whether I want to try and get the bearing off the crankshaft or just clean it 
on the crankshaft. I really prefer to have it off. All right, so let's look at the front, of the main crankcase here. Uh, take this piston out. And note the so orientation it of it. As you can see, it's pretty gummed up and doesn't want to move really. So I need to I need to get another container and drop that in some cleaner. Same with this. This bearing feels really gummed up. It's probably not bad. It's probably just gummed up. I'm going to really just want to soak all of these parts for a little while in this totally awesome cleaner. And then I'll address uh, adding some oil and some heat to these bearings to liven them up. I really don't think they're going to require replacement. It's just a matter of some dried fuel residue that's got them gummed up. And this ring is not going to be hurt by soaking in some totally awesome cleaner either. I mean, it rotates right now. It's fine, so that'll be good too. So overall, pretty happy here because this is a pretty nice engine.